Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. When last we left Dralgoth, he and Paco had invaded the Royal Apartments and rescued Coyote from Stevie J, a notorious BTL dealer. Well, we dispatched of Stevie J and brought her back to the Seamstresses Union, and Miss Kabota was so grateful she's now giving us access to the Shadowrun facilities underneath the Seamstresses Union. So let's get to it today. But first of all, we have a lot of karma to spend. Check that out, 11 karma. That's some good stuff right there. Let's go ahead and spend it. And I know one thing I was planning on doing is we're going to upgrade our body. Give us some more uh, resistance to physical damage. And let's see what else we have down here. Let's dodge. Dodge helps to reduce the chance to be hit by physical attacks. Oh, we have nothing in dodge. Let's take care of that right now. And we can go ahead and max it out at three with the karma we have left. I'll take it. That was pretty easy. <laughs> and a thousand and seven new yen. We got a thousand as our finder's fee for Mrs. Uh, Kubota, who was very happy that we returned Coyote. Let's go ahead and talk to her, see if there's anything new that we can chat with her about. How else may I be of service? Is Mr. Delilah here tonight? We need to uh, hand off those gems that we got from the Royal Apartments. Yes, Mr. Delilah is in the back bar. That's usually where he does business. Well, you mentioned Coyote's Crusade. What is it? Coyote grew up in the Royale, but managed to escape that life. However, her cousin was apparently not so lucky. He came to town about a year ago and fell in with the wrong circle. He was introduced to Sim Chips and became addicted to BTLs. Coyote has been tearing her way through chip houses for months now, searching for him and acting as a one-woman cleanup crew. Well, if you don't mind, how did you get involved in all this, Miss Kubota? I'm a former runner. Now I provide a safe haven and a marketplace for runners who need a trustworthy place to congregate and do business. I bet she was so nasty back in the day. Like, just a legendary. Are any Johnsons or Fixers here tonight? I know what Fixers are. I don't think I want to know what the other is. In addition to Mr. Delilah, you may wish to speak to Von Gras. He's often stage-side. Von Gras is most often a receiver of found artifacts, but he occasionally has work. Oh, cool deal. We'll be going now, then. Let's head this way. And... Oh, there's Von Gras. Looks like a dapper-dressed dwarf. Von Gras is busy talking on his comlink, checking his heads-up display, and mon or motioning to a runner standing nearby, all at the same time. He's an intense little man. You get the sense that he likes to look busy. I'm Von Gras. Make it quick. Biz is good. Talk to me. Mrs. Kubota said you're a fixer. He still hasn't looked at you. He's going a mile a minute. Nothing for you tonight. Sorry. I'm doing a thing right now. Important thing. Talk to you later. Oh, hey guy. One more thing. He covers his comlink for a moment. Tilts his head your way, but you can see he's still staring at his HUD. I'm a fence too. If you got anything you need to unload, come see me. Okay, that's good to know. Was there anyone else we can talk to back here? Doesn't look like it. And jin has gone for some reason. Looking for a date? I'm game. Oh. Well, someone got lucky here tonight. Let's head to the back bar. And there's Johnny Clean. Johnny leans on his seemingly brand new mop and surveying the crowd at the Union. Hmm. Well, thanks for the tip the other day. Mrs. Kubota said I should go to the safe house, but I don't quite know where that is. The piano is a little out of tune. Check it out. Oh, that's cool. Who else can we talk to? Let's talk to Mr. Clue. The hulking troll bouncer is the immac in the immaculate suit stands as impassively as ever. The absence of dust on his broad shoulders is the only real indication that the man ever moves. He nods to you when you approach. Evening. I see Coyote is back, looking only a little worse for wear. We have you to thank for that? Hmm. The having her back part, yes. You have the gratitude of everyone here, especially mine. Couldn't stomach losing anyone else so soon after what happened to Sam. Well, you feel protective over the people here. Immensely. Toward another, anyone who walks through that door, be they, be they employee or patron. Unless they mean ill will, of course. Let's see if we can ask him a few questions. Haven't minded so far. Have you heard anything else about Sam's death? People are saying it was the Ripper, but people say a lot of things about what they don't know or what they don't understand. 
You know where I can find a fence? I already know, but... I think Von Gross is at the bar near the stage. Dwarf with a cyber eye. Can't miss him. Well, how long have you been working for Mrs. Kubota? I crawled in here after I go... After I awoke. I wonder what that is. Mrs. Kubota took me in and gave me a job. I've been here ever since. Do you have to pay extra for a manicure on hands that big? It's not the size they charge more for. It's the blood under the fingernails. I bet. Well, I should be going. Catch you around. Let's head to the piano here. Oh, Paco's still with me. The piano looks like it's been here since the Union was built, but doesn't look like anyone has played it in earnest for almost as long. And if I recall, she told me to play these notes. So we'll play G-A-F-F-C. As you slowly peck the notes out on the keyboard, they spark a faint memory of wonder, immediately forgotten as the entire piano slides to the left, revealing a hidden staircase. You descend the stairs into the Union safe house. Oh, it didn't actually move. I was wondering if it was going to. The entrepreneurial Mrs. Kubota has combined everything a runner might need into a one-stop shopping experience. Black market equipment, high-end magical talismans, and a fully stocked cyber surgery dealership. Nice! And, even look, it's even got a little kind of game room. Whiz go wolves. Far out. What's in here? No bunks available, but welcome. We can go, what's this? Oh, okay, it's our stash. Very cool. Alright, we'll confirm. Don't really need to deal with the stash right now. Oh! Dr. Sarah Castle. And there's Coyote. And there's Coyote's arm. Lovely. Dr. Sarah Castle. Make it quick, I need to operate. She's got- Oh look! She's got a little, uh, homunculus on her shoulder. Thanks for helping me out back there. Hmm. Null Sheen. You should be okay now. We'll see. It's gonna take years to work off this debt. Okay, folks. I'm gonna have to ask you to go sit in the waiting area. Watch some trivet or something. This young lady and I have work to do. Hmm. Oh, I do have some questions first, though. But we'll take it easy, Coyote. We'll be here when you wake up. Who said anything about me going to sleep? Just give me something to bite on. Man, she's tough as nails. You're tough, kid, but you're not that tough. Whoop, <laughs> never mind. Okay, Coyote, let's take a look at your face. Leave it. Excuse me? Coyote? I earned this face by being stupid. I'm gonna keep it. End story. Whatever you say, kid. With one swift move, she sinks a syringe into Coyote's thigh. Nighty night. Oh, wow. So she's gonna keep the scars as a reminder. Look, she has a brand new cyber arm. Coyote looks better and worse than you last saw her. Look, she got all the blood wiped off and her eyes looking better. All the gaping holes are plugged and she's sporting a new, shiny new cyber arm. But now as the adrenaline is worn off, it's clear she needs some rest. Good morning. Thanks to the miracle of modern science combined with Doc Castle's magical healing powers, I'm almost good as new. Better, really. Hmm. Can I talk to you for a few minutes, Coyote? About Sam? Sam Watts? What about him? Oh, no. She doesn't know. Sam's dead. Holy dreck. Sam. I can't say I'm surprised. He was on a downward spiral for a long time. What can I tell you? Now well, tell me about Sam. I heard you liked him. I did. He made me laugh. No one else seemed to like Sam's jokes, but I did. Uh, me too. He was one of the few people to make Dralgoth smile. You were friends? Well, we ran together. Got it. Guess it was the same way for me in a way. We drank together. Sam just had a way of charming you. I guess I knew him the best of everyone here. I'm sorry he's gone. Well, you served, night you served Sam the night he died. What do you remember about that night? It was a pretty average night. Regular crowd as I remember. Sam was drinking with a guy named Armitage. And Jake Armitage? Yeah, you know him? Oh yeah, I met him. He's a charmer too. She bites her lower lip. I like gingers. Hey now. <laughs> anyway, Jake and Sam were having a few. Well, Jake was having a few. Sam was tossing them back, but good. Eventually he got loud, the way he sometimes did when he mixed drinking and who knows what, and Mrs. Kabota wanted him ejected. 
Mr. Chloe wasn't around, I can't remember why, so she asked Jake to do the honors. Jake dragged him out the back into the alley and that's the last time I saw Sam. Well, you said he got loud, do you remember what he was saying? She thinks. Standard Sam Drek, how he grew up rich and didn't deserve this, how he hated his mother, how he loved his mother, it was pretty pathetic stuff. Well, did Sam have any enemies? She thinks. Enemies? That's hard to say. Sam partied hard and when he did, he ran his mouth off pretty good. Got his ass kicked on more than one occasion. But no, I don't think he had any enemies, at least none that I'm aware of. Well, where did Sam live? On the streets, mostly. He'd occasionally convince someone to let him flop on their couch, but he'd always overstay his welcome and get kicked out after a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here so he could crash in one of the bunks. He used one the night before I saw him last. I didn't know Sam was having it this bad, man. Well, how bad was his drinking? If it was just the drinking, it would have been bad, but Sam wasn't the monogamous type. He dabbled in everything. Booze, chips, drugs. He loved the nitro, whatever he could get his hands on. It wasn't always like that, but once he got sick, he started using more and more stuff to try and forget about it. Well, Sam was sick? Dying. Didn't you know? Yeah, everyone could tell. You could just look at him and see he was a walking corpse. It had to be the drinking. Then he disappeared for a while, and one day he came back all better. Looked good even. Oh, man. Well, did he say how he got better? He said his mom helped him out. Never said how, though. Wait a minute, I thought Sam's mother committed suicide. Well, thanks, Coyote. Now I need you two to do something for me. Uh-oh. What do you need, babe? Well, Paco's still here, I keep forgetting. I need you to talk to Mr. Delilah for me about the Royale run. He's usually upstairs. Tell him I didn't get, get the gems. Maybe I could take another run at it when I recover. Well, I will. Interesting. Now, let's go ahead and look around here and... Oh, Sam, that must be Sam's bunk. Can we examine it? The bunk is a mess and reeks of booze. Searching through the sheets, blankets, and pillow, you find an old photograph that has seen a lot of wear. Look at the image on the photo. The picture is of a blonde boy and girl, both about age 14, sitting on a dock on the edge of a lake. They appear to be twins. The boy has his right his arm tied around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl is planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind his head with her fingers. Uh, let's check the back of the photo. Written in a woman's hand are the words, Sam and Jessica, Lake Sammamish State Park, Summer 2040. Interesting. Let's go ahead and pocket that. So I have this theory about the Ripper looking back on it. Um, she took blind, or the Ripper took blind Lucy's eyes, okay? The eye, she was blind, but got new eyes put in. And Sam was dying, maybe his liver, and he came back all better, so maybe he got a new liver. Maybe the organ donations or getting the new organs is kind of the link between the Ripper killers, maybe. I'm guessing. Let's talk to uh, Sarah Castle. Excuse me, Doctor, do you have any use of that arm? In Shadowrunner circles, the term Doctor is often used quite liberally to describe any sawbones with a needle and thread. But in the case of the Union's re resident medical expert, nothing could be further from the truth. The safe house boasts a fully equipped medical suite complete with shamanic, or, uh, yeah, shamanistic fetishes. This is the sixth world medicine of the highest caliber. The Doctor herself is an unassuming sort, perhaps the type to go unnoticed entirely if not for the sprightly spirit perched on her shoulder like her own personal gargoyle. The spirit's burning eyes follow you constantly, even as the doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. However, she does look up long enough to acknowledge your approach. I'm Dr. Castle. I understand you were instrumental in bringing Coyote back to us. Thank you for that. Well? And I suppose you're the one who patched her up. It's impressive work. Thank you. It's a shame she didn't let me repair her face, though. Yeah, well, Coyote's stubborn. She notes you eyeballing the facilities. I can tell you're surprised to find a full-service med bay under a dive bar in a slum. Don't be. This is a Shadowrunner bar, after all. For a purveyor of cyberware and trauma kits, there is no place better place to set up a practice. I patch runners up, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for their runs. I may not be as mobile as Doc Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Can I help you with anything? That's cool. Um... Well, let's, let's start out first. Let's break the ice. What's that on your shoulder? This little guy supports the healing rituals I perform on my patients after surgery, dramatically reducing their recovery time. 
Not standard procedure, of course, but results speak for themselves. That's kind of cool. His own, her own little nurse. Well, tell me about trauma kits. Trauma kits are fully automated stabilization units that include a defibrillator, spray on synthetic skin, and medical nano machines. They can save a runner's life if you move fast enough. So if you're bleeding out, one of those can get, get you back on your feet? Exactly, but you have to be quick. This is Doc Wagon's own field tech, but even their stuff has its limits. Well, let me check out the cyberware. What cyberware do you have available? Oh, yeah. Very cool. Well, what can we afford here? Looks like only these three. Vision magnification eyes. Uh, Renraku's basic cyber eye replacements extends and enhances your vision. Add 3% to hit. Silver Tech Cyber Arm. Silver Technology's basic replacement limbs that add point plus six HP. And a Data Jack, a requirement for riggers and deckers and those that want to use a Smart Link weapon. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and exit out and see what else they have for sale here and we may come back to her. And let me check the medical supplies while I'm at it. Doc Wagon Platinum Trauma Kit. Restores a teammate to life with 100% of their total health consumed when used. For a thousand? Good grief. And I think we have some of the trauma kits already. Alright, that's good enough. Alright, well never mind. Let's go ahead and head over here and see what we have. Hey. Well, hey yourself. Uh, looks like we can talk to this guy. I bet he sells magic stuff, though. Past the bar, the edges of the safe house become somewhat indistinct due to the magical haze surrounding a particular elf. The man seems only half of this realm, his mind wandering the far horizons of astral space while his body peddles his otherworldly wares. Good evening, young orc, and welcome to this humble home that we call the Union. I am Algernon Halfdream. To ease your way through the Sixth World, I offer you the best in magical foci, spells, and fetishes for the conjuring of spirits. That's not my thing. Sorry, sir. Uh, what else we have here? Hey, it's Eric. Change your clothes, change your life, right? Not only will you look better, but that'll... But that you look bad now or anything, but each one will help you keep you on the right side of the ground. Take a look. Well, show me what you have. Did you get anything new? Let's see here. Nope. Nothing new. So we'll stick with the uh, gas mask and such. TB Gruberman. What do you got, TB? Theodore Buster Gruberman is a well-groomed orc, dressed with a precision that suggests the straight lines of a military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight, as they say, and the neatness this presents is only compromised by the uneven tusk protruding or only compromised by the uneven tusk protruding from his mouth. The only other defect in this picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm, which is obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious as to ruin the line of his suit. When he speaks, the orc's voice is soft and thoughtful, and he takes almost exclusive and he talks almost exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, razoring factor, tensile strength, and of course, price. Bunker Buster Gruberman, at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I'm your man. Ooh, how can I help you, Will? What exactly do you sell here? Things that go bang in all shapes and sizes, plus other odds and ends on occasion. Consider me your own personal armory. All weapons are guaranteed to meet strict UCAS military spec or your money back. In addition, I can handle routine maintenance, repairs, and upgrades if you so desire. And if that wasn't enough, I also teach a safety and instructional course every weekend. <laughs> this week we're covering bayonets. Mark my words, they're making a comeback. So what can I get you? Well, let's see what we got. Hmm. Doesn't look to be anything new. Grenades. Drones. No new, uh, slicey weapons. That makes me sad. We do have two pistols here. A low-grade pistol carried mostly by guards. Damage 6, range M, cap of 12. Or capacity of 12. And then 6, range medium, capacity of 28. You know what? I'm going to do slow upgrades. So I'm going to go ahead and sell or buy the Black Scorpion. Let's look at my stash here. 
Uh, let's sell the security. There we go. Good deal. And we'll buy this black scorpion. And just be a little bit better equipped, I'm thinking. We'll confirm. Uh, let's put the jazz in our inventory and put another med kit in the stash. All right, that's all. Thank you, sir. Who else do we have to talk to here? Oh, that looks like the janitor, dude. Every inch of the tech alcove is covered in a chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and a million other things that you can't identify. In the eye of this techno-bit storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shop fool you. I can get any Matrix hardware or software that exists, and if it doesn't exist, then I can get it made for you. Any questions I can answer, or anything gear you need? Let's actually find it, because I know some people who are probably watching this aren't aware of a lot of stuff going on in Shadowrun. So, let's just go down the line here. What's a deck? You jack into the Matrix, or in the context of a run, when you jack into the local node of the facility you're in. The deck determines how many programs and ESPs you can carry and the firepower of your base matrix attack. Decks have IP. When a deck's IP is reduced to zero, you'll get booted from the system, and it'll hurt. Very similar to the actual Matrix movies. You plug into a computer, you interact with all the stuff inside of it. Antron. Uh, what's a program? A program in the Matrix allows you to defend your avatar against countermeasures and enemy deckers. There are a wide rate variety of different programs for attack and defense at different power levels. As you progress as a decker, you can use more powerful versions of these programs. And what's an ESP? Johnny, you want to take this one? Hey, there he is. Sure, when you infiltrate a facility on a run, you have a team, and when you jack into, a ma into the Matrix, you are all alone. That's where ESPs come in. An ESP is a highly advanced artificial life program, which when you deploy it, manifests as another team member in the Matrix. Different types of ESPs have different abilities. That's cool, kind of like pets, in a way. Very cool. Well, what do you have for sale? Data jack requires decking, decking. All right, this this is an indrawals area, so we'll exit out. And I think that's good. Oh, I'm being rude. Let me introduce you to our resident decker and my good friend Johnny Clean. Oh, okay, he's a decker. While in the same overalls that you saw him in upstairs, down here, leaning over a workbench crammed with circuit boards, cables, and chips, Johnny Clean seems a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once as hot and as invisible as the most infamous Deckers today. So he's one of those, like, hidden legends. Good to see you down here. Happy to be of help if I can be. Well, how is decking used, Johnny? The decking skill is often used just on terminals in the real world to get information, hack doors, etc. But occasionally a run will have the option or the requirement to go into the local matrix LAN of the facility you are infiltrating in order to gain access to valuable information or control more important things in the real world. Yeah, why are you dressed as a janitor? Did I stand out upstairs? No, janitors never do. When I was younger, I had a rep for getting in and getting out of systems so cleanly that no one knew I was there. Half the Matrix runs that earned me my rep were made possible because I was able to get inside the facility posing as a janitor. Now it's just sort of part of me. Is it true that you were part of the Echo Mirage team? I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty awesome. Let me take this one. Listen, I've known the guy for over a decade and he's been smart enough not to tell me, so he is sure as hell not going to tell you anything about those days. For your health and his, best to let the subject drop. Fair enough. Well, we'll see you guys around. And... Drawl is, uh, in the middle of a computer console. That's... not good. Cool. Can we talk to Johnny again? Be careful out there. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Interesting. When we got some new gear, let's check the cybernetics one more time. I think we're gonna get some cyber tech. Alright, Doctor. Let's look at the cyberware. And I don't need a data jack, and the only one I can afford right now is the cybernetic eye. Plus 3% to hit. You know what? I'll take it. Confirm. Install cyberware. Cyberware causes essence loss. This affects the magic rating of your character, as magic is equal to essence rounded down. 
Magic is very important for spell casters. The base number of spell slots available to the caster is equal to half of their magic rounded down. Therefore, losing essence can cause spell slots to be permanently lost. In addition, each point of magic lost increases all spell cooldowns by one. Casting a spell again while it's cooling causes drain damage to the caster. You cannot have less than one essence. Well, that doesn't really matter much to Draugoth, now does it? Confirm. Good deal. Well, it looks like Draugoth now has a shiny new cybernetic eye. Let's go head back upstairs. Ooh, can we talk to Coyote again? You're back. I think the highlights of the Wolves game will be on soon. Want to take a load off and watch with me? Hmm. Did Sam have a sister? Her brow furrows. Yeah, I think he did. He mentioned her once. It didn't sound like they got along that well. Your Kong leak chips and the screen shows the smiling face of Officer Aguire. If he's smiling, it must be about money. Hey. Alright. <laughs> Talk. There's been another Ripper murder, this one at the NTSB investigation facility down on the docks. You owe me for this. No? I need to see that now. I put it on my tab. You there now? Better get here quick before McCluskey arrives. The image of your PDA dissolves as the call ends. Another Ripper murder? Where? The docks. I've got to go. Okay, listen. I want to help. You dragged me out of the Royal before, some, before something bad happened. Worse than getting my arm torn off, and Sam was my friend. You head to the docks, and I'll see if I can track down Sam's sister, Jessica. She might be able to help us. Alright, well thank you. I appreciate the help. Cool. Well, alright guys, it looks like we have uh, taken the grand tour of the Shadowrunner facility, got ourselves a nice pretty cybernetic eye, and found a lead into another Ripper murder. So things are going, moving along here. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you liked it, go ahead and click like down below, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment. That'd be greatly appreciated, and we'll catch you next time. Later days, everyone.